Authorities tightening their grip on the armed occupation of a national wildlife refuge in Oregon. The FBI arresting three more people a day after eight armed protesters were taken into custody. Federal agents also sealed off that wildlife refuge following a shootout at a nearby roadblock where one of the occupiers was shot and killed. Protest leader Ammon Bundy now using his lawyer to urge his followers to stand down and leave the refuge. Listen. We'll have more to say later, but right now I'm asking the federal government to allow the people at the refuge to go home without being prosecuted. To those remaining at the refuge, I love you. Let us take this fight from here. Please stand down. Please stand down. Go home and hug your families. This fight is ours for now, in the courts. Please go home. Let's bring in our legal panel, Ebony Williams, an attorney and Fox News contributor, Yodit Tewelde, a former prosecutor and current criminal defense attorney. Ebony, uh, given all of the fire and brimstone with which this thing began, it kind of ended with a whimper, at least in that statement from uh, Ammon Bundy's lawyer. Go home and hug your families. What about... Yeah. What about all the conviction that began this thing? Yes, yeah, certainly, John. I mean, this is just ripe with so much political and cultural and now legal um, issues that are certainly going to take a while to sift through. Um, I think at this point what's important here is to separate the, the killing of the protester, because that's going to be a huge issue, and then the, the legal issues with the eight people that have been detained and appeared already and were denied bail. Those should be separate. The, the guy who was killed almost seemed to foretell his, uh, his death. He said, that he would rather, you know, die there than spend a day in prison, that freedom was too precious and that sort of thing. Is it possible that this was, you know, almost suicide by cop? I mean, obviously, right now, we don't know what the circumstances were surrounding his, his shooting and his death. Um, some are saying that it was a murder, and some are saying that he actually provoked the officer. So at this point, we really don't know. But just like Ebony said, I mean, we have these eight defendants now who are standing um, trial, or not trial, but they do have charges now pending. And now the issue is, are they going to be released on bail? Well, and, and what's the likelihood of that, Ebony? Uh, very unlikely. Uh, certainly, the, there's two issues anytime you're dealing with bail. It's uh, propensity to do further harm, and then flight risk. And that's the one I'm really concerned with here, John. Uh, certainly, this is a group of people who have, you know, been very vocal in their disdain for law enforcement concerning these issues. So I would think a judge would be very unlikely uh, to release them for that flight risk issue. The fact that one of the protesters did die in this confrontation with the other, with law enforcement, does that ramp up or bring about the possibility of the ramping up of charges against the others? Well, I know one thing, um, just to piggyback off of what Ebony just said, the likelihood of them harming themselves or harming others in the community is also another issue um, that the judge will consider at the detention hearing tomorrow. You have individuals who were armed, AR-15s, they had pistols, knives, explosives. These are individuals who were re ready to die and kill for their beliefs. So at this point, no, I mean, it, this is definitely a situation where we're going to have to look at these individuals very closely to determine whether they're going to be released or not. The, the, the feds were supposedly very reluctant to um, end this thing with a use of force, given what happened in places like Waco, Texas. Sure. Are, are you surprised that it, you know, it ended this way with a gun battle and a death? I am surprised, John, uh, and I think it's very unfortunate, Just despite what you think, all right, about the underlying issues being addressed here, you never want to see a fatality. And certainly from law enforcement's perspective, uh, you cannot match that aggression with deadly force just because. And they're going to have to show when the time comes that there was indeed a lethal threat uh, against them that caused that deadly force. Otherwise, they've got an extreme problem on their hands. And so you think that these arrested, uh, these arrested protesters are likely to be in jail for a long time to come, not likely to get bail? Not likely to get bail. When you look at the factors, you look at whether they're going to be a flight risk, and just like Ebony said, they defied, showed clear defiance when authorities told them to leave this refuge, and they said absolutely not, and they refused to leave. In fact, they were um, going to committee meetings and trying to recruit, likely to recruit others to join the movement, so they showed clear defiance, and they were armed. 
they are a clear flight risk. They are a danger to themselves and to others. And I don't see that a judge would release these individuals out into the community. No. Another point real quick, though, John, to piggyback, uh, you know, the defense lawyer is going to say, though, but your honor, the least you can do for my clients talking about the eight defendants is mm -hmm. let them go in light of this tragedy that has happened to their brethren or what have you. Uh, again, that's where the distinction and separation is important, uh, that there's not a reward of bail simply because something awful and tragic happened at the same time. And it's hard to believe that they made the point that they wanted to make when they started this thing. Ebony Williams, Yodi Tuelde, thank you both.